say it this way. Let's get it down where we can grasp it. At least 100 or more pounds per priest times 300. About 30,000 pounds or more is what this thing weighed. That's how they took all this very work. seriously. And that's kind of why they were motivated to come up with all of the man's rules and regulations, trying to make sure that they kept the law. The only trouble is when you try to enforce the laws of God with all kinds of man-made rules, you miss the spirit and the heart of God's word and his law and his purpose. Jesus said it later, he said, you know, if you love God and you love one another, that covers all the law. And what people do sometimes is they get mean and hateful. Even the priests that were members of the Sanhedrin, the members of the Sanhedrin, all these lawyers, they wanted to kill Jesus. And there's something wrong when the religious leaders want to commit murder of a, of a teacher of the word, isn't there? Sometimes today we have this problem in our culture where people oh, yeah. act in very despicable and hateful ways and they are an embarrassment and a shame on the body of Christ. They for sure are. Anyway, at the moment of Jesus' death, the curtain, this curtain had been torn in two, and that meant that they made a way opening for people to have access to God. One of the things Jesus accomplished was he made a way. He is the way for you and me to come to God through faith. So during all the centuries of Israel's existence, it would have been unheard of for any common person or any other priest to even think about going into the presence of God. That's why it seems so strange for them to say that we, as a Christian, can come boldly under the throne of grace and mercy. It seems strange to anyone else. How could we dare? Well, I'll tell you, it's only if you're in Christ. Only in Christ can you come. If we weren't in Christ, we should not even think about approaching God. We need to get right with God first. So every person who believes Jesus Christ died for your sin, your personal sin, then you can know that you could come boldly into the presence of God through faith in Jesus Christ. It's only by being in Christ. It's not me. It's like I don't, I don't, I'm not ever going to be worthy in me to approach him. When we come to the table, it says approach it in a worthy manner. Well, that means you need to be in Christ. You need to be a believer in Jesus Christ. That's how you approach the table in a right manner, part of it. Anyway, it says in John chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So we can enter into his presence. And by the way, God is inviting you right now. If you've never put your trust in him, he's inviting you right now to come to him in faith. Second thing, graves were opened, and those who are dead in sin can escape death very simply by putting their faith in Jesus Christ. But these graves were opened before that was known. People didn't understand that then. In fact, it scared them to death. When the great the earth quaked, rocks were split, and the graves were opened, the veil was torn, and it was dark, and these people were, I think, probably scared to death of what was going on in Jerusalem when Jesus died. You know, when God gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai, the earth shook. And I think sometimes what God has to do to get our attention is to shake us up. He's got to get our attention. Shake us up. Some people say, well, I don't need Christianity and I don't need Jesus Christ. I'm doing just fine all by myself. And I want to say sometimes God has to shake us up to the point that we say, well, I, maybe I'm not right with God. Maybe, you know. Maybe I uh, don't measure up to the standard of God in my personal life. Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 says, Therefore the law was our tutor 
to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Well, sometimes good teachers have to get a hold of the student some way or other without harming the student, but get a hold of them and say, are you listening to me? Are you paying attention to what I'm saying? And they have to give you a test. They have to say, we're going to take a test. I want to see if you've been paying attention and listening. What's the purpose? It's to make sure you're listening and learning and, and that this is becoming assimilated. In Verse 52, life. the second part of it says, Many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves, very important, after his resurrection. A lot of times we read these way. things. People in Jerusalem could have just ignored this. There is no way that so many people who were there wouldn't have known and started talking. And I'm sure as they left and went after Passover and they went back to their homes and their villages, I'm sure there was a lot of talk going on out there. So now when the apostles go out and they start explaining, I am sure they had crowds that came. Hey, there's a guy over here. He's explaining about what we saw. Remember in Jerusalem that day there was the earthquake and the sky got dark and then we saw People who had been dead coming out of the graves before, you know, just before we left town, we saw all this happening. There's a guy explaining it, and that might answer some of the question. Why was it the apostles go out and they could draw huge crowds of people would come and say, probably, what must we do? What must we do? Because the priests weren't in this tragic. The rabbis weren't telling them. That's awful. One of, my, one of my great responsibilities when I accepted the call to the ministry was the call to the ministry of the gospel. The call to the ministry of the gospel is to share the good news. Amen. I can't imagine me ever standing here and not sharing the gospel at least, I don't know how many I've done it now tonight, but at least several times during the service because it's the most important thing that people need to understand. Without that, you could have the music and the lights and the action and all the other stuff. But if you don't have the gospel, you don't have Jesus. You've got to have faith in him. So these people up walking around, I'm sure they got everybody stirred up. And those who saw this had a lot of fear. They got scared. They got very afraid. It says, when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things happened, they feared greatly. The, word, the Greek word is phobos. Phobos, like phobia, it means terror. It means to the point of great anxiety and trembling. That They weren't just a little afraid. These were Roman soldiers, legionnaires. They were used to seeing very frightening things and not running from it. Being willing to stand there when somebody's getting stabbed or chopped over here and over here and stand their ground and keep fighting. That's the kind of guys they were. These were not, and a centurion didn't become the captain over a hundred Roman soldiers by being an easy guy. The centurion had to be smart and tough and brave, courageous even. When those kind of guys get scared, it's time for all of us to pay attention. <laughs> they said, he said, truly, the centurion and those with him, all of them, said, truly, this was the Son of God. That is awesome. The first people who got it and said it were the soldiers that nailed him to the cross. Remember? Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Amen. He already knew the first one to testify was the centurion who was in charge of crucifying, and Jesus prayed that he'd be forgiven. I have to believe God did because he then said, truly, this is the Son of God. He couldn't have known that or said it except by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know that when you read, read further in the New Testament, it tells us how do you know the ones that are going to persevere and endure. It's the ones who believe he died and rose again. Yes, for other to lead us in prayer for the cup. Father God, we just thank you for this day that you've given to us, the time that we have to spend in remembrance of what you did so long ago, that you were willing to give up your own son, that through his death, that there might be power in the blood that washes away all of our sin. Lord, we just thank you. Just bless this time and bless each and every one that is here.
Jesus. The scripture says, in the same manner, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.